Hey, Justin Cham is here, Real Estate Wholesalers Club, and I want to talk to you about the most important thing when it comes to getting lease option deals, and that's giving great phone. Knowing how to talk to a homeowner or a seller lead and get that conversion, you know, make that deal and get that property deal into your business so that you can sell it off to a tenant buyer and make your payday. I mean, isn't that what we're all here to do? And I'm here to tell you, there's tons and tons of awesome lead making products out there, lead generation machines and all kinds of, uh, you know, knickknacks, patty wax and gives the dogs a bones. The thing that really gets the deal done. That's right. The phone. So stay tuned. I'm going to talk a little bit about how to convert these seller leads into deals for your business. I'm Justin. I'm a real estate wholesaler. And if you want to be a real estate wholesaler, the most important deal is that first deal. I call that getting the shut up money. I invented the Real Estate Wholesalers Club to help you do just that. Are you ready to get to your shut up money? Are you ready to tell your doubts and your fears? Hey, shut up, this works. Now, I've created an entire course on this one topic and this one conversation, so I'm not going to be able to share everything with you in this one small video and check out the Mastering the Phone course because I want to work with you and help you grow and develop into knowing how to make this conversion happen over the phone. It's really not complicated, but there is a process. There is steps to it. There's things that you should be doing and some things you shouldn't be doing. And we do talk about that more in depth, actually extremely in depth. And we give you live examples of us calling seller leads, me calling seller leads. I'm calling your seller leads. You bring me your seller lead. Hey, matter of fact, show up on the live show on Saturday and bring me a seller lead and I'll call them right there live in front of you, in front of everybody in the entire world. So I, that's how much I believe in this conversation. It really, really does work. Okay, so I'm going to share with you how to convert these leads. How do you take a lease option lead and turn them into a deal? Let's go right now. The first thing you're going to need to do is probably pull out the seller call notes and take a look at that because in the seller call notes, I give you all of the major highlights and the steps and stages of the conversation so that you can reference back to it and learn it, use it as a tool. Remember, I always say formulas, those are for babies. Uh, so when you grow up a little bit in this and you won't need that so much anymore and you can put that away, but the seller call notes are right there for you. So anyway, seller call notes. Take a look at that because that's important. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go through that and I'm going to talk a little bit about it as I go through it so you understand how the conversation works, how it flows, and how we move, baby. Hi. Yeah, my name is Justin. I'm a real estate investor. And I'm looking to get my next property deal. I saw your, uh, your property on uh, Zillow and I thought I would uh, you know, give you a call and ask you a few questions about it. You can ask me a few questions, and uh, if it's not a good fit for you, I want you to feel free to go ahead and say no. Does that seem fair? It does. Excellent. That's what we call the agenda. Setting the agenda is extremely, extremely important. If you don't set the agenda, then you fail to establish yourself as an expert. You want to be the expert. You want to be the professional. You want to be the doctor of real estate, okay? <laughs> What's the doctor do? The doctor comes in and he just gets right down to it. Hey, why don't, why don't we talk for a minute? I'm going to ask you a few questions. You can ask me a few questions, but we're going to find out where, where it hurts, okay? So anyway, let's jump in. I want you to be that. I want you to be that. I want you to be the doctor. I want you to be the doctor of real estate, okay? I want you to set the agenda, set the roadmap for the call. Okay, that is the agenda section. You will need to memorize this for the most part. Just go ahead and jump right in it. Memorize it. Practice it while you're driving down the road. Learn it because this here is probably the most important part of the conversation, getting started right, setting the agenda. The second stage in the conversation is what we call the qualification stage. That's where you're asking your questions, where the doctor of real estate is really asking the questions to get down to the heart of the matter. Okay, so what are the questions? 
here's some of the questions that you should be asking, and you should be asking them in a conversational tone. Yeah, uh, I saw your property online. Like I said, I'm a real estate investor. I'm looking to get my next property uh, investment. And so, uh, you know, what I wondered was, is uh, how, how long have you, uh, how long you lived there? And how long, uh, why would you be selling? You see, I'm just asking questions. Nothing complicated about it, okay? And they're going to come off with something like, oh, well, I've lived there for four or five years, six years. And then I'm going to say, oh, okay, wow, four or five, six years. That's yeah, quite a while. It feels like home, huh? Then, you know, why are you selling? Why wouldn't you want to stay there another five or six years? And that sounds very unconventional. And it is unconventional. But it works, okay? It gets the person to start talking. They're going to start sharing with me. They're going to start saying, well, we're going to need to move because we got this job transfer. Or we're moving because we're getting divorced. Or we're moving because we're just, the wife lost her job. Or she's a travel nurse and we have to move to a different state. Uh, maybe there's a veterinary opportunity. They can go to school, but they have to move to New Mexico and live there for seven years after. I, I don't really know. There's a mil million, million, billion different reasons why they might be moving. But you want them to start opening up to you. The next question you're going to want to ask is this. Yeah, um, so what do you think the property's worth and what are you asking? Do you see how I like to ask questions in twos? <laughs> I find that to be very disarming. I don't know why. Maybe it scrambles their brain. But if I were to just say, hey, what are you asking for the property? That doesn't, that's kind of a closed-ended question. They're just going to give me a number. If I say, hey, what's the property worth and what are you asking? Now, that creates a question in their mind. Well, he's asking me what I'm asking and what it's worth. Um, and if it's different, then I'm going to have to have a reason. Exactly. Next, I'm going to find out about their commitment level and the timing. You know, I'm pretty interested in, in uh, properties just like this one, and, and I, I'm, I'm really trying to do something today. I'm kind of in a hurry. You guys aren't in, interested in doing something that quick, are you? You see how I did a negative redirection there, and basically what I'm doing is I'm setting them up to tell me that, yes, we would do something right now today. <laughs> I want them to go against the stream of my, my words and tell me we are ready and motivated to do something right now. If they're not ready to do something today, what do I want to do? I want to put them in my follow-up campaign, and I want to follow up with them later because I am in the business to make money when? Today. Now, there may be some other questions that you want to throw in here. You, uh, what, you want to get enough information to determine what kind of offer you should be making here. Is a lease option something that's going to fit or maybe a subject to or maybe it's a, uh, an ugly house. Maybe it's an ugly house deal and you need to make a cash offer. So, you know, you need to determine. If you don't have enough information to determine if it's what kind of offer to make, then you're not ready to go to the close. You need to start asking more questions, okay? Remember, when you go see a doctor, the doctor asks you tons and tons of questions. He asks you things that you're thinking, man, why did he ask me that? Well, yep, he's asking questions. And you trust him. You don't even question him. I bet you don't even know what school he went to. I bet you don't know when he graduated or what kind of degree he has. I bet you know very, very little about this guy, but because he looks the part and he asks the questions, you're willing to communicate, and then you're willing to trust, okay? So be that guy, all right? Ask enough questions to determine what kind of offer you need to make. And once you've determined what kind of offer that you can make that would be a solution for what his situation is, then and only then is it okay to move forward into the closing stage or the third stage of this conversation. In the closing stage of this conversation, you're basically going to confirm with them everything that you've talked about up to this point. You're going to recap the agenda, and then you're going to recap what they expressed as their situation and their needs, and then you're going to offer to solve that situation. You're going to offer a solution. Your offer is going to be the solution to that issue, and then you're going to listen closely, answer any questions, and and objections they may have with short pithy explanations and then just say hey if I can fix this if I can make this right can we do business today it's really that simple so let me give you an example let's let's role play real quick yeah you know like I said I'm an investor and I'm looking for my next investment property and you know I saw this one and it seemed interesting to me so I uh, wanted to call you and ask you a few questions I, I and I appreciate you letting me do that and, uh, you know, I, I appreciate you opening up to me like you did and sharing with me a little bit about your situation. And it seems to me like, uh, you know, I could offer a good solution for you here. 
And, uh, you know, if I understand your situation properly, here's what it is, blah, blah, blah. And here's how I think I could solve that problem. I can't give you cash today, full asking price, because uh, since you're asking what it's worth, but what I can do uh, is I could give you the full asking price if you were willing to uh, consider leasing it to me for 24 to 36 months first. Is that something that might work for you? Or probably not. The close is actually just that simple, guys. If you're dealing with a motivated homeowner and you've gone through this process, you've listened to them, you've cared about their situation, and you've offered now a solution to solve their problem, to give them payment relief, to give them the ability to move forward in life, okay, without the worry and concern of this house that may be a strain on them, uh, may be a strain on their health, it may be a strain on their marriage, you don't know. It could be a real, real problem for them, and you're offering a solution. When they say, yes, you've got a deal, go ahead and send them the agreement. All right, there's more information about this in the corresponding button about outsourcing. If you want to outsource parts of this, you can. Uh, also, now is a great time to go check out that course, the uh, uh, Mastering the Phone course. It's excellent right now. If you haven't done it, go do it now. It's more in depth about what we're talking about today. If you want to make money in this business, you're going to have to learn how to do the phone, okay? Don't think that the, some tool somewhere is going to do the work for you and you're just going to have money fly into your life. No, you're going to have to learn how to make deals happen. And that happens right here on the phone.